Well, we recently looked at the Dread Knight. Now let's see what they can do for us when we put a Grandmaster in there. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. We'll be continuing in our series on Grey Knights today with a look at the Nemesis Dread Knight with a Grandmaster in that's an HQ choice for Codex Grey Knights. This was a very interesting new way to get some more life out of a existing kit that Games Workshop introduced when the new Grey Knights Codex dropped at the start of 8th edition and basically allows you to pay a lot of points to combine the scary melee prowess that is a Dread Knight with the leadership psychic abilities and superior weapon skill and ballistic skill that a Grey Knight Grandmaster has. As we've already done a full video on Dread Knights, I'll mainly be talking about the differences that a Grandmaster brings to them today rather than going over all the exact same things that we talked about in the last video. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the Grandmaster Dread Knight is a HQ choice for Codex Grey Knights, and he'll set you back 165 points with his cheapest loadout with two Dread Fists. This puts him 50 points more than the standard Dread Knight, largely the stats are the same, but slightly better in numerous small ways. Firstly, he has Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 2+, plus. first he has Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 2+, plus, meaning that he'll just be a fair bit better in melee and at ranged. Leadership 9, which in general doesn't make the biggest difference, but can be important for certain psychic powers. And he has 5 attacks instead of 4. So typically he'll be having 6 attacks on the charge, or even 7 if you deploy the Dread Knight specific stratagem from Psychic Awakening. On top of all this, he can also cast another psychic power. He has a 4 plus invul save from his Iron Halo, and his Rites of Basil will allow him the normal captain type aura so he can re-roll hit rolls of one for himself, and also any friendly units nearby. Other than that, all of his war gear options are exactly the same, with the exception that he can also take warlord traits and relics. So overall, in comparison, he's just more dangerous in pretty much every way, be that melee, shooting, psychic, and leading other units, mainly at the expense of being easier to shoot off the table point for point, at least with most weapons. The question is, are all of these advantages worth paying the 50 point tax? to upgrade to this guy. Let's go through all of the advantages one by one and try and make that decision. Firstly, his weapon skill and ballistic skill of 2 plus certainly amp up his damage output, particularly in combined with that reroll ones, which naturally will affect him himself. The ballistic skill 2 plus really helps with the ranged weapons such as the heavy psi cannon and the gatling silencer, because dropping down from hitting on 2s to hitting on 3s isn't nearly as painful as dropping down from hitting on 3s to hitting on 4s when your dread knight moves and in general Dread Knights are wanting to move. Presuming that you've moved this turn, this guy will hit just over 9 times with his Gatling Silencer, compared with a regular Dread Knight, which will only hit 6 times, so it is slightly over a 50% damage buff in the shooting phase. It certainly makes taking these nice Silencer and Heavy Psy Cannon weapons a lot more viable, as you're just getting a ton more bang for your buck in terms of the extra investment. Although do bear in mind that you're making a more expensive platform even more expensive by piling more guns on him. Nevertheless, I think that it will be far more viable to load up a Grandmaster Dread Knight with a Gatling Silencer and Heavy Psy Cannon compared with the standard one. They just give you a ton more damage for the same amount of points in upgrade. Obviously the extra ballistic skill doesn't help with the Heavy Incinerator, which in general for me means that I'd much rather take the Silencer or Psy Cannon over the Incinerator, at least on a Grandmaster version. In terms of his melee prowess, hitting on twos in melee actually makes the Nemesis Demon Hammer more viable on him as well, due to, again, the high weapon skill, meaning that the minus one to hit penalty isn't quite so onerous. If we're assuming Shock Assault is in effect, a Grandmaster with a Demon Hammer will do an average of 12 wounds with that Demon Hammer to a typical Toughness 7 or 8 vehicle without an Imbul save. This is just monumentally better than the 6 to 7 average wounds that the regular Dread Knight will do. The stacking buffs of the extra weapon skill, attack, and reroll ones bonus really do make a massive difference. The Great Sword isn't really much far behind the Demon Hammer, even on the Dread Knight though. Against your standard toughness 7 or 8 vehicle, you'll still get just over 11 wounds through. So the difference is kind of minimal. I could see the arguments for upgrading to the Great Hammer, just to give you absolutely every chance of getting the extra damage through. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with taking the Great Sword either. And for me personally, I could easily happily go either way. There's just not really that much in the difference. The only thing that I'd certainly recommend is that definitely upgrade one of these over the Dreadfist, 
having so many attacks just means that you really want to be making them with a really strong close combat weapon such as the sword or the hammer. Next we come to his rights of battle rule, which is great because not only have we seen the effects of how much stronger it makes him himself, but it also will allow you to reroll ones with any other friendly Grey Knight units that are nearby him. Maybe if you happen to have some deep striking terminators or paladins, or even other dread knights, you wouldn't necessarily have to pay for multiple grandmasters, you could just use one and give out those rerolls to everyone nearby. Having essentially the cost of a captain hard boiled into your nemesis dread knight included in that 50 points that gets you so many other things is a really solid bonus, although it does become a bit less relevant if you're taking multiples of them as you're not going to get quite as much benefit from multiple copies of the captain aura of reroll ones to hit. Next we come to that invul save, which is another nice survivability bonus, and certainly stacks incredibly well with sanctuary, giving this monster a 3 plus invul save whenever you cast that on him, and making him very obnoxious to remove. Let's say if we didn't have sanctuary to start with, as you can only deploy it once in your army and it might get denied, the grandmaster dread knight will generally be not as tough as the standard dread knight, at least point for point, because he costs 50 points extra, and against a lot of weapons that are AP-2 or worse, the invul save won't actually make any difference. If you do start getting shot by something that's AP-3 or better though, say overcharged plasma, the boosted invul save will help. For example, the Grandmaster Dread Knight will take an average of 18 plasma shot hits before he goes down, whereas his standard Dread Knight will only take 13. So against high AP weapons, it will make a significant difference and it certainly makes Sanctuary a lot more powerful on a Grandmaster than on a standard Dread Knight. Finally, we come to the Psychic Power, and as the Grandmaster Dread Knight is a character, it means that we can take powers from the Dominus Discipline if desired, so he's got a little bit more flexibility there, although typically Sanctic is usually going to be best on a Dread Knight, as the Sanctic Discipline is better at self-buffing between things like Sanctuary, Gate of Infinity, Astral Aim, or other things. At the very worst though, if you are using all the key psychic powers elsewhere, having the extra cast will mean that the, at least you get one more Rites of Banishment Smite to stack another mortal wound or two on the enemy over the course of the game. So that's a ton of buffs there. This guy really is a Dread Knight on steroids, but it doesn't end there. As he's a character, we can give him a Warlord trait and relic, and he has access to a few more stratagems as well. In particular, Nemesis Lord is a very scary trait on a Dread Knight, as this allows you to add one to the damage characteristics of his Warlord's melee weapons. Typically, this will mean something like an extra 2 or 3 damage on your chosen target each turn, presuming of course that it's a big multi-wound monster that you're attacking, rather than just light infantry. So it is a powerful buff against certain targets. You could give him Law Master for another Sanctic spell, Hammer of Righteousness for plus one to wound rolls, which will most come into effect against heavy targets again and be another powerful melee buff, or the ever popular first to the fray to re-roll charge rolls for him and any other Grey Knight units within six inches. To be honest, I like first to the fray a lot, as you certainly can't kill anything in close combat if you don't get there in the first place. Sadly, the relics of Titan are a little lacking, only able to take the Domina Liber Demonica for a mighty minus one leadership on enemy demon units nearby so I'd probably not bother with a relic on this guy. Finally though, being a character, we can access a few more stratagems for him. I didn't mention the psychic buff ones on the regular Dread Knight, but seeing as this guy can cast two powers, they might be a bit more viable. Things like psychic channeling when you absolutely need some powers to get through, mental focus for an additional cast, and various others. One powerful option that the regular Dread Knight doesn't have access to is only in death does duty end, which is essentially allowing a character to fight when they die. And the Grey Knight's Grandmaster Dread Knight is one of the fightiest, scariest characters that you can get. Getting another combat phase out of him just before he goes could be a really big deal and potentially change a game. So I'd certainly remember this if he ever snuffs it in close combat. Finally, we did mention it in the main Dread Knight video, but Overwhelming Assault, the Dread Knight specific stratagem, which you use in the fight phase to get an extra attack and reroll results of ones for your wound rolls and damage rolls. It's great on the regular Dread Knight, and it's absolutely horrific on this guy. For example, you know we got 11 or 12 wounds from a typical greatsword attack when you're targeting a standard vehicle with this. Well, that goes up to a mighty 17-ish if you pop this one command point stratagem. If you're charging down an Imperial Knight, I think that this one is the one to go for. And of course, this one's particularly potent if you're just about to get killed as well, as you'll be able to use this with the fight when you die stratagem too. In terms of in-game use, for me, you're more incentivized to load up the Grandmaster Dread Knight with all manner of fancy kits. I'd most certainly take a Dread Knight teleporter, as against certain armies you certainly want to be getting the first strike, 
and not have him shot off the table turn one. And it might also be worth it just literally so you can keep him safe until you've had a chance to activate Sanctuary to make him very hard to kill. I'd certainly take at least one of the ranged weapons. As I said, I prefer the Silencer and the Heavy Side Cannon to the Heavy Incinerator for this guy because of his better ballistic skill. And I could certainly see you taking both of those to really put decent hurt on the enemy. Compared with the regular Dread Knight, it's going to be a lot more important that you try and keep this guy safe from fire and try and employ any tricks that you can to have him live too later in the game, as each turn that he has decent damage output will be a good turn, but barring Sanctuary, he is generally a fair bit easier to kill than the Dread Knight, at least point for point. I could certainly see people running multiples of these, as very scary shock troops to send into the enemy army and force you to deal with them, as if you don't, then a lot of things are getting cut up with great swords. Having looked at the Grandmaster in comparison with the Nemesis Dread Knight, I would now probably say that the Grandmaster is the more competitive unit for most general purposes, although having a defensive profile that isn't significantly better than the main Dread Knight is a major disadvantage when you're paying 50 more points for the model. Despite this though, he just really does offer so much more in terms of almost double the melee capacity, far improved shooting, the option of being really tough with Sanctuary, that nice rerolls aura, and the extra cast on top of all that. I certainly think that Grandmaster Dread Knights are a really competitive choice for a Grey Knight's army, and I'm sure that they'll be making plenty of appearances in more competitive Grey Knight's lists, now they've had the big boost from Chapter Approved and Psychic Awakening. Let me know your thoughts and experiences with the Grandmaster Dread Knight down in the comments below. It'd be interesting to hear if yours have achieved any great deeds of renown for you on the table. I'll be trying to continue with a Grey Knight's video around once every week, so feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see that. If you live in the UK and you'd like to support the channel, I do have a link to Element Games down in the description below. If you're thinking of buying any Warhammer in the near future, if you click on that link before ordering through them, then some of the money goes towards Auspex Tactics without costing you an additional penny extra. I've always found them to be pretty reliable myself. I haven't had any problems with them on previous orders that I've made. And it's very nice to have a nice 20% off Games Workshop products. So thank you very much for listening. I'll hope to see you guys next time.